Hey, what's up everybody? Mike here and this is a LMT launcher setup guide. I know a lot of you have been asking me how to go about making this look like what you see in my videos. I did do a Pi control video and now this is LMT. Now LMT is a lot better looking. It's a little bit cleaner and more simplified and the animation scaling is a little bit cleaner. So once you have downloaded, I will put everything in the description below on how to get this application through the XDA forums. But once you have downloaded and installed this, you will then see this basic setup or preference screen. And from here, you can navigate into your settings, your info, and your Pi tabs. You can also use swiping gestures to navigate through here. But once you have it installed, you will need to activate LMT. If it is not in fact activated, you will also want to set the auto start LMT little tick there so that this will be enabled throughout each reboot or when you shut down your device and return it or restart it. These other little features right there, you can skip until you see your Pi activation submenu through here. This is where you're going to adjust all of your basic activation or triggering. So you're going to see that you can in fact launch this from both the right and left as well as the bottom, but you can customize this with the area position option that is the first option available. Through here, you can choose whether or not you want to activate into single area trigger or all three. You can also adjust your area thickness. The default is 30, which I believe is plenty, but if you have a larger screen or device or display, then you might want to change that up a little bit. And each time you change your actual width or triggers, they will show you really quickly the overlay or the little bars. Now, once you select them, they will go away or auto hide, so to speak. Now, once you have that value set, it will automatically turn off LMT and reinitialize the program or application. So once you have found the trigger you like, you can in fact go to the next area of information. Now you will see the area length here. I like to call this width to be honest, and that's basically going to make it maximized or shorten the actual width values. Now the default is 600, which is plenty, but again, you can go in here and adjust those values to anything you want and those bars will indeed change again in real time. Once you select them, they will auto hide as they do always in each process. Very, very simple setup here. Not too much to go over or explain. It's just a matter of tinkering with it until you find something you like. Now the area gravity is going to change where those triggers are positioned. Now you're going to see the default is central to your display, but you can put them up at the top or the bottom. So if you run into issues when you're swiping or you swipe in the centralized area of your display unit, you might want to change up your area gravity based on where you're not swiping. So that will be up to you on preference values. You are going to have apps that you can blacklist within the LMT launcher. Um, if you do add any that you made a mistake on, you can't come in here and clear all of them out. You can't clear certain selected ones, unfortunately, but you can go in there and then redo it or reset it up according to that. Once you have that all set up, your triggers are in fact in place. You can then go to your Pi style submenu. And from here, you can actually choose whether or not you want to change the defaulted colors. So you're going to notice I have a black and kind of like a greenish blue highlight. And there's some other stuff I have built in as well that I customize. And I'll include everything that I use in the description for you guys to set it up like mine if you want to. But in here, you can set up your actual colors. You're going to have your basic description information here with little arrows. So this is going to change your color options based on the area you are going to change your colors. So once you select your actual area of interest, you can adjust your RGB values and your alpha apparently to change up your specific information there. So it's very, very easy to set up. It's just a matter of trial and error until you find one that you like or that matches a theme you're using or an overlay or a ROM or whatever it is you are trying to match up you can do it with LMT. It's very, very customizable. You can even change your radius based on the inner pi radius or the outer pi radius, which basically means you can change the width there on the inner section or the outer section. What I recommend you do if you are going to change a lot of this is set up the pi first to look like what you want it to have. So if you're going to have two different levels, go ahead and set up everything within your pi launcher options here. And then once you have that all set up, then you should adjust these values. It's just a lot more simple to do that because you will have everything there visually and then you can see what it looks like in the end. If you do that setup first and then you go apply a bunch of stuff, it might not look like you want it to look like. 
So that's just a recommendation from me. You can go about it the way you want to. But you do have the ability to change your radius both on the inner radius and the outer radius. You can change the shift size, which is basically going to put a little weird um, like a foam in the middle or a frame to advance those out. Now the default is zero, basically disabled, but you can put whatever value you want. And this will basically split or wedge your pie in there. I don't think I actually said it. Okay, let me try that one more time. So if I put 100 in and hit OK, you're now going to see it just looks kind of weird and my pies are split up. There's this really weird wedge in between, or in this case, it's called a shift. So I leave mine disabled, but you can adjust that and you can, of course, change the color of that shift if you want to do that pie colorization option there. You also have your outline, which is basically going to change the outline size. I guess I was just in the wrong one before. Sorry about that. But that's basically going to put an outline around your wedges or your pies. So if you slice that up, it will put an outline around your background color. Or you can keep it the same or you can disable it. Now the default is three, but I leave mine at zero. The slice gap is also zero, but you can change that as well. So if you put 10 in there, then that will place a gap in between your pie units. So that's a little bit cleaner than using shift. And that will be up to you guys. I like to leave mine all together. Again, completely up to your preference but the default is in fact zero. Now the pi start gap is going to be how far out that gap comes out. So you can change that up. If you leave it on the default zero, it kind of looks a little bit ugly. It looks like a half eight donut or what have you. So it kind of just comes in off of the screen or the edge of the, of the display, but you can change that up. I like to keep mine at roughly 35 and it will obviously depend on your pi radius settings that you set but it just looks cleaner at 35 or anything above zero. As you see, it just comes in. Another rule of thumb, and I'm laughing at this because it's kind of a pun, but uh, another thing I do to measure out or get the size I like is to use the tip of your thumb. And if you can place that in the middle there, that's a good indicator of having pie set up really nicely. You'll see my thumb fits in there really nice. Now this might change because you might have a smaller screen. Uh, you know, I have a Nexus 6, so that it's a six inch display. So I have a lot of room to work with, but that's kind of what I use for measurement and to start with because it's basically showing me that I have plenty of room to use one hand and navigate my way about without too much effort. So that's how I set it up. You guys can choose whether or not that's going to be useful for you or not. Uh, you will have your pi behavior under these options and you can change your long press value. Now the default is going to be 2000, which is roughly two seconds. I think that's a little bit long to sit there and wait. So I leave mine at about 800. Even 1000 would be good as that's roughly about a second. Uh, but you can go in there and control that based on your preferences. And you can change your feedback type as well. If you want to adjust your long and short press actions, that's all in there and customizable. Now you do have a multi command, which is disabled on default. And I recommend you keep that value. You will have your Pi icons and you can change these if you want to. You're going to see that I do have a lollipop on my Nexus 6, so it has the lollipop PlayStation style icons. But you can rotate these, so they are going to rotate with your pie wedges according to that. I think that looks cool, but you can disable that if that's something that's not of interest to you. Now, if for some reason uh, you want to go back to a KitKat style icon setting, you do have that option. So you can choose those if you want to for whatever reason. But I myself like the newer style icons. So I use those button layouts. You can go in here and scale certain images that you pick or icon settings if you want to and really get customizable in there. And they have some information in there to help you with those values or those strings if you need that help. But the default is zero and I think that that is fine to have it rather large. I actually like the default look. And you can choose custom images if you want to and select a directory in which to navigate to get those pictures to actually integrate with your Pi Control if you want to. So a lot of customization there. You do have some Pi extensions down here at the bottom and you're gonna notice I disabled my clock and date and time and basically my battery status. But you can go down here and you can change all of those colors as well, just like in your Pi Control options. And you can choose whether or not you want to show that information. So if you want to have your information available, you can just enable it through your Pi status show infos. 
and you'll see it has information slide in and out rather quickly and it has your time there. But you can choose whether or not you want to have it along the Pi so it goes within that arc, or you can choose to have it just kind of display up here at the top randomly your information. Kind of ugly in my opinion, but hey, some people might find that attractive or they might just like that in general. That will be up to you guys, but that pretty much sums that up. You can, in fact, change your font setting as well within that information that is displayed. Now, you can swipe over and get into your Pi Control information here, and this is basically going to be all of your button and your application accesses based on the levels that you apply. So with LMT Launcher, you are going to get two different levels to choose from, and the first level is going to allow you up to five buttons, and the second will allow you up to seven, both in short and long press. Now, basic setup is pretty simple. You just have your recents, your home, and back button, and you can set that up in here very easily within the first three options. You will have the first button or the item that you will set up, which will be your short press action. And you will see in here the list of information that you can choose from. Quite a lot of options and features. Your first section will basically be your back home uh, long press um, home actions or your recent apps. You can do a search if you want to, next, previous, or you can launch a specific application or a toggle through this menu. You can also set that up on your long press. So the first two are basically going to be your first button or your button in general. They are always subcategorized. So you're not going to have one, two, three, four. It's going to be one short press, one long press. So just keep that in mind, but it's very simple to set up. And the way I actually have mine set up is I have my home button in the middle, my quick launch or recent apps right there as I believe the first. So it's kind of a little interesting how they set this up. Let me show you that real quick. So it's actually going to be one, two, three, four, five. So it goes one at the top and vice versa. Same thing on the other side, one at the top. So your first button's always at the top just to get you familiarized there really quickly. But in terms of what I use for my long press actions, uh, this might not be a big deal for some of you as you're all going to set it up differently. But, you know, with custom navigation, and Lollipop, you know, if I want to navigate to uh, Google Now or I want to launch Google Now, I set that up for my long press home. So if I long press here, it will launch OK Google Now or OK Google, and it will also launch any specific search pattern. So if I am in a application like Chrome, I can do that long press there and it will automatically go to search. Same thing with emails or messages or Google Hangouts and what have you. And then regular short press will just go back home. Um, in terms of what I have for my back long press, that will actually kill the app that I am currently in, just a single app. So I can long press, hold it, and now Chrome will be closed. You'll see it here. So it will close out Chrome. It will kill the task, basically. So Chrome's no longer there. And same thing will happen if I'm in LNT, excuse me. It will, should automatically kill that. Well, for some reason it did kill it, but it didn't work or it didn't show it on my recents. But anyway, that's how I have it set up. And it looks like I just got bugged out there. So I will show you this little bug as well since it just happened here. With LMT Launcher, you cannot multi-touch the screen in most cases. It's a little bit buggy. I don't know if it's just the version I am running, but if you push on this screen is what I'm trying to say. Let me get out of here. If you push on this and then hold this other side, it's still going to be on there. It's still going to be activated. And you're going to see it's still registering my touch, basically. So I don't know if that's a bug with the current version, the latest version, but just be aware of that. And sometimes it will deactivate LMT because of this. So just make sure you are single pressing or single touching the screen when you are using LMT. If you have two of your or two touches at the same time or multiple touches, I think it will bug out. Just be aware of that. You know, you might run into some issues if you are trying to multiple touch the screen or multi-touch and you're just accidentally pushing things, it might disable LMT. But that pretty much explains LMT. In a nutshell, you can come in here and customize anything you want to. It's very simple to set up. Once you get a little bit more familiarized with all of the features, it's a little overwhelming at first, especially if it is your first time using this application. But a very simple process and hopefully this video will help you guys figure out some stuff or at least get you in the right direction. And like I said, I will include all of the links in the description on how to obtain this from XDA, how to install it, 
and I will put all of my custom settings in that description as well if you want it to look just like what I have that you have seen in most of my videos, including this one. Anyway, guys, that pretty much wraps up LMT Launcher in a nutshell. Like I said, I hope this was informative and resourceful and useful information. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and maybe you want to show me some love by subscribing to my channel, as I'll have more videos like this, as well as other devices and other products and reviews in general. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.